It's the 22nd anniversary of the Red Death here in Missoula, Montana, one of the players' favorite stops, and pro stop number five here for the season. But we're gonna kick you off with Saturday because how it went down was anything but expected. Quarterfinal number one brought number one Luis Cordova against number nine Vic Perez. Perez shows he can compete against a top ranked pro, keeps it tight in game one. Vic is really putting the pressure on Luis, dictating almost every rally it seems. But Cordova snags it 15-12. And there it is. He dove for that ball, but it was two bounces. Game number two, firefighter Vic Perez out to save his chance to advance. So steady and calm, nothing seems to phase him. And even in such a dramatic close game, is able to take it and force a tiebreaker 15-13. And he's going to get this one. Point. And this is going to a tiebreaker. And Vic showing some emotion there, Four staying minutes. on the court. Looking to put Cordova's fire out, he manages to fight himself into a 7-7 tie after being down and starts a flame of his own. He gets hot, has a 13-8 lead. And he goes sharp with that ball wow. and he gets another point. Cordova able to pick up a few more, but after a grueling hour and 40 minute match, Perez shows he knows how to keep his cool and takes down number one Cordova, 15-11. He's gonna go for it and he gets it right there and he takes down Luis Cordova. Number nine seed defeats our number one player in the world. That's unbelievable as we look at that replay. That's one of the best shots of the tournament. Great shot, And yeah. you know Vic is feeling this one. Mentally, does your occupation being a firefighter help you out in there because you seem so stoic and composed? Yeah, absolutely, because people are going through some of the worst times of their lives and I just have to, you know, keep calm, keep cool, and just make the situation better. Uh, it was able to transition over on the handball court. Um, I just got to keep my cool, you know, hit my shots. I, I hit, I missed a lot of easy ones, but I knew as long as, you know, I stay in there and stay mentally focused, I'd have a chance. Second quarterfinal of the day was quick. Number five, Leo Canales, taking on number four, Dave Fink, and Canales on a mission. Oh, what a get. Oh. Comes in dictating every rally. Oh, great hands. Takes this easily in two, 15-3, 15-5. And there it is, Leo back to the semifinals, defeating Dave Fink. Now for number two, Daniel Cordova versus number 10, Mark Doyle. You've got a hop artist here, and I think that some of these young Irish players just haven't seen that. And another quarterfinal showdown. I, I give that shot an A plus right there. This is phenomenal. Doyle proves he can compete against the elite. And Mark is really hustling here. He's not gonna get this though. What? How did Mark get that shot back? Oh my gosh. Watch this. Because how would you even think to do this? Diving into the back wall. It's incredible. Stealing game one, 15-11. It's going to be put away right here. And it is. And look at that emotion okay. for Mark. Cordova will have to come back. Oh, like that shot. Oh my gosh. Game number two, 13 to 14. Hold it. Hold it. Football. Hold it. We got our first football of the tournament at 13-14. Yeah. Oh, and total. it is. Yeah, it's a huge football egregious football. And he does. And there it is, just like that. And if I was Mark, I'd be upset too. Looking at the referee and just like, are you kidding me? Yeah, that was unbelievable. Sending this to a tiebreaker, 15-13. Yes, game three, Doyle seems like he may have nothing left. Cordova takes a 13-3 lead, but watch, Doyle comes striking back. Look at that shot. Mark Doyle with ice in his veins. The unthinkable becomes possible. And this is a giant comeback against Daniel. So intense, Doyle is within one. That just kisses the front wall. That was very close to being a skip. That wouldn't have gone another inch. 13-12 and Cordova finds himself with the service and a shot. What was that? And now it's match point. Mark can't believe it himself. He will not be upset. He's headed to the semifinals 15-12. Gets it. And Daniel does it. That was one heck of a match. Might be the match of the tournament. I'm not sure. There's been so many of them. The last quarterfinals has number three, Martin Mulkerns, against number six, Sam Esser. Yeah. Mulkerns blasting away. Unstoppable in game one and game two. There it wow. is. And able to save his energy for the semifinals, beating Esser 15-8, 15-1. Still Saturday, and now the semifinals. Matchup number one, Leo Canales and Vic Perez. Canales offensive from the beginning. Oh my gosh. And that's a beautiful left-handed kill shot, Mouse. Owns game one, 15-3. But then Perez flips the switch in game two, jumping out to an 8-1 lead. And this is starting to feel a little bit like Vic against Ivan Burgos yesterday. Remember Vic lost that first game 15-3 and then came back and won the next two? This is anything but over. Wow. That's a beautiful shot there. That's like a highlight Fine. reel shot. 
Canales catches up and it is now a 10-9 ball game. But Perez closes it out to force another tiebreaker of the day. Oh my, look at that. Perfect shot from Vic Perez. And he defeats Leo Canales. Look how perfect that ball is. You can't really get any better than that. Slice under it overhand, put a big natural on and straightens it out. Game three, it's Canales on fire and Perez just can't put it out this time. Leo Canales wow. is in the finals. Canales is headed to his just first finals of the season, 15-7. Last match of the day on the other side of the semifinal bracket, Daniel Cordova and Martin Milkurens. First minutes of the game, it looks to be all Mercurens running away with this one. He's in total control in game one, Cordova just scraping up a couple points. But game two becomes a nail biter. Both players packing on the power, tied up at seven, still head to head here at 12. And this is an intentional party ball. Ooh. And that hit every wall there, right? He went, he went for the kill with that too. Yeah. But this, where Cordova breaks out, proving he's not done yet wins 15-12 and we are headed yes to another tiebreaker for the day where Mel Curran's seems to be handling everything perfectly. Has a quick 5-0 lead in his hands. Still carrying a lead 8-5 but Cordova determined. The crowd is silenced in this one as it's tied at 8, 9, 10. Nice shot. Very good shot. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's, an, that's avoidable. An avoidable? I don't know if I agree with that call. I don't think so. That's yeah, just a strange spot, yeah, bounce. Martin doesn't know where that ball is yeah. going. That's unavoidable if you ask me. Martin's just trying to get out of the way. It's not even a setup. These rallies are incredible as Daniel comes <gasps> back, surpasses Mulcurrens, and takes this one 15 13. Oh, oh my no. God. <laughs> Another heartbreaker for Martin Mulcurrens. Daniel, I think, could not have played one more point. He's completely cramped now. Crazy. I mean, I felt like I was playing good. He played amazing the first game, you know. So I was like, okay, I played good, so there's not much I can do different. So I'm gonna try and play the same, and uh, you know, stay with him and try to neutralize it, and then start getting points. And so slowly but surely, you know, I started to get points. He started to get a little tighter. Um, he wasn't, you know, putting it down as much as he was in the beginning, and his shots are so hard that they, even if it's a kill shot, it will bounce a second time by the dotted. So it gives me some time to react, you know. It's crazy. I can't believe I pulled that off. He was playing really good. Here it is, finals day Sunday. And Dave, this is the only men's final post-COVID not to include either Killian Carroll, Luis Cordova, or Martin Mulkern. Wow, that's a cool stat. Daniel Cordova versus Leo Canales, both Lake Forest College alums. They met on the tour four times last year. The last time was the Players' Championship and Canales with the win. That the only other time on the tour he has actually reached the finals. Cordova comes out and in just four minutes is up 8-0. Look at this rally. Nine minutes in, Canales is in the box, looking to not make it a donut. It's 0-14 and he is able to snag that first point. Canales gets competitive in the rallies, picks up four. Oh, and just sneaks that one into the left corner. But Daniel puts this one away, 15-4. Game two, it's Cordova swinging away again. That's a good serve. Point. Holy smokes. And the first to five. No screen. The ref lets him play through, Dave. I like it. Oh my gosh. And then Leo misses that. But that lead starts dwindling as Canales chips away and takes his first lead of the match, 6-5. Doesn't last long. Cordova checks that and raises him another and quickly takes a lead, unsurpassable with the way he's killing the ball. And check this out. Daniel on the fly, and what a get. Oh my gosh, what a great Boy. shot. What a great shot. Daniel's one of the best fly kill artists. I don't know if you call that a traditional fly kill, more of a reaction, but probably will be the clincher, Dave. Momentum all his is going to be an easy finish. Yes, Daniel Cordova with the Red Death title, 15-8. Oh my there gosh. There it is. Point match. Good point, Daniel guys. Cordova wins the Red Death. Daniel Cordova takes tour stop number five in Missoula, Montana, here on ESPN+. Plus. He's the first player to win two stops this season. This, his fifth title. And this one's for my grandma, because she's not doing too well, so this one's for her. Is she watching? She can't, know. She's in induced coma. She's doing real bad, but if she's listening, I hope she is. It's for her. I know you love this tournament coming to Montana. Share how much this one means to you. Um, yeah, I saw this plate since I walked in, and I told my girlfriend, I was like, I hope we can take it home. And she's like, we're taking it home for sure. She had no doubt. Uh, I had my doubts, but uh, I felt good. So it feels great, and Montana's a beautiful city, you know. 
not just a handball, you know, in the court, but outside the court, the people and everything, the people who run the tournament, they do a really good job. How nervous were you last night when you knew how much you were cramping up? Oh man, yeah, I know. I called a timeout. I had to call two timeouts because when my legs cramp, it really kind of takes away my game. I have to be pretty fit. My brother, he doesn't use his legs, so he can play well without him. But I use mine a lot, so for me, it's very important. I was nervous. I drank some pickle juice and it helped. For the World Players of Handball, I'm Karen Mack, and I can't wait to see you next time.